Hello everybody. So our topic is going to be staphylococcal scaled skin syndrome. So here we will be discussing all the aspects of staphylococcal scaled skin syndrome that you need to know for your medical board examinations. First, it's important to understand Staphylococcal scaled skin syndrome is an exotoxin mediated disease. Exotoxin is produced by the bacterium Staphylococcus aureus. So there are the toxin involved is exfoliating toxin. There are two types of toxin, toxin A and toxin B. So the, the, the toxin producing gene for both exfoliant toxin A and exfoliant toxin B, that those genes are not present on the bacteria. So they come, they come from outside. So the exfoliating toxin A gene is present on bacteriophage, exfoliant toxin B is present on the plasmid. So Staphylococcus aureus will produce exotoxin, exfoliating toxin A only when lysogenized by the bacteriophage. And exotoxin B is produced only when infected by the plasmid. So that is the reason that incidence of staphylococcal, staphylococcal scaled skin syndrome is very low. It's because not, not all the staphylococcus produce the toxin. When they are isogenized by a phage or in infected by a plasmid only, they can produce the toxin. That is why the incidence of the disease is not that common. So we'll talk some epidemiological aspects of aspects of uh, staphylococcal scaled skin syndrome. So it's a disease of young children, usually affecting infants and children below five years of age. It's rare in adults, but it can occur in these adults with some peculiar skin disorders. So the disease develops secondary to an infection somewhere else. In the case of neonates, it's commonly the umbilical sepsis. And in, in case of older adults, it's usually a wound infection somewhere else in the body. So how does the toxin work? So this exfoliating toxin that is produced in the wound or in, in the umbilicus, it tends to spread. It can spread locally and it can spread system, systemically. So if it, if it is spread locally, the outcome is the localized disease known as Buller's sympatico. There are Buller's lesions in a localized area of the skin. That is Buller's sympatico. But systemic spread results in the disease that we are talking about, staphylococcal scaled skin syndrome. So how do the toxin works? Toxin binds and degrades the desmosomal glycoprotein desmoglein 1 which is present only at the level of fistatin granulosum. Toxin will bind only to desmoglein 1 which is a desmosomal protein present only at the level of stratum granulosum. So this causes damage to the, uh, the uh, granular cell layer and uh, super separation of the superficial skin, skin superficial to the stratum granulosum. So this can result in formation of bully and formation of denuded skin, large areas of denuded skin. Now you, you might think about why, why does staphylococcal scale discon syndrome, skin syndrome affects only young children and adults with peculiar skin diseases. It is because desmoglein, uh, desmoglein 1 is, uh, the, the, the toxin can work on desmoglein 1 which is associated with cell membrane ganglioside known as GM4. Toxin will act on the desmoglein 1 which is in close association with ganglioside GM4. So GM4 is only present in the skin of young children and in adults with peculiar skin diseases. So that is the reason staphylococcal scaled skin syndrome affects only young children and adults. So what are the clinical manifestations of staphylococcal scaled skin syndrome? Fever, it can be high fever and skin erythema, redness of the skin and tenderness of the skin. And there are skin bully, they are flagship skin bully. You see, this is because only the bully 
are found involved in the superficial skin the, because the bully develops superficial to the stratum granulosum that is why they are flaccid they will easily rupture and also they can easily fuse with the adjacent bully right and also they can result in formation of large areas of denuded skin because these uh, this, this fuse bully they can peel off they can peel off resulting in large areas of denuded skin but this disease has very good uh, prognosis so there is rapid healing the mortality rate is less than 5% less than 5% its prognosis is very good compared to most other uh, bullous skin diseases How do you diagnose uh, staphylococcal scale the skin syndrome? Actually, see, it is a clinical diagnosis. So, this character, characteristic clinical manifestation like bully, denuded skin in the presence of a wound infection, umbilical sepsis should make you suspect about the diagnosis. And these lesions have uh, the Nikolsky sign positive. You know, Nikolsky sign is. When you stroke the involved skin, there will be peeling off of the superficial skin. You see peeling off of the superficial skin while the involved skin is being stroked. That is Nikolsky sign. And you can do the culture of the culture culture of a soap from the wound or the umbilical uh, infection, um, uh, the uh, site of infection in the umbilicus. So you will you will isolate Staphylococcus aureus organisms. On culture, but it's important to understand the fluid from the bullia that is sterile. There is no organisms isolated from the fluid, bully, fluid, fluid, because it is only toxin mediated. The, the what you see in the bully are clear fluid. But it's important to understand the bullous impetigo lesions will have organisms that is localized disease. That is bullous impetigo those. Bully will have staphylococcus aureus organism, but in in the case of generalized disease, meaning staphylococcal scale the skin syndrome, those the fluid in those bully are sterile. So when you think about the differential diagnosis, one of the most common thing that should come to your mind is Steven Johnson syndrome or toxic capidermal necrolysis. So Steven Johnson syndrome. That the severe, the toxic capidermal necrolysis is the severe form of Stevens Johnson syndrome. So these are auto, uh, the delayed type five percentage disorders, right? So there is uh, peeling of the skin uh, at the derm epidermal junction level. That means deeper, um, deeper than what you see with the staphylococcal scale the skin syndrome. Here the uh, the separation of the skin is derm epidermal junction, right? Usually secondary to Drugs such as antibiotics, especially sulfur, and maybe anti-epileptics, carbamazepine, phenobarbital, uh, maybe due to infections such as mycoplasma. Or, so there are several reasons, but there is uh, uh, involvement of mucosal surface. Mucosal involvement is there, but staphylococcal scale it's, it's skin syndrome. There is no mucosal involvement. But Steven Johnson syndrome, toxic capidermal necrosis, there is always. Is uh, mucosal membrane involvement. Burn is another differential diagnosis because uh, in staphylococcal, staphylococcal scale the skin syndrome you will see denuded skin areas. So it is you have to differentiate from burn. Then also other bullous skin conditions such as pemphigus vulgaris and bullous pemphigoid. Both these conditions are IgG mediated autoimmune diseases and pemphigus vulgaris IgG act against the uh, Desmoglein 1 and Desmoglein 4 present at the um, stratum granulosum again. So that is why they produce superficial blisters. So they are flaccid. Bullous femphigoid act on the hemidesmosomal protein on the at the basal cell basal cell layer. So that is why they are, have the the bully are deep. So these bully are little tense. So they don't see easily rupture. That is that is how you differentiate uh, by clinical exam on clinical examination. From pemphigus vulgaris, so bullous pemphigus lesions are tense, and pemphigus vulgaris lesions are uh, flaccid. So those are the important differential diagnoses. How do you treat? 
fluid support. It's like a burn patient, so just fluid support is very important. Replace the fluid. Antiseptic dressings of the wounds, right? Antiseptic dressings. And anti-staphylococcal antibiotics, cloxacillin, dicloxacillin, nafcillin. 